Hello, fellow Mega Tennis, and welcome to another episode of Hello, Fellow Mega Tennis, the best Mega Ten podcast out there. I'm your host, LaRue, and with me is Neb. Hello. Glib. Hi. <laughs> Spider. Hey there. And Nocturne. <laughs> hey, Nocturne. Well, I don't know where the end was coming. I, it's because it's because I used the wa- wrong tone, and I realized. Yeah. That, I was, <laughs> I'm not gonna bail you out of that one. Terrible. So, obviously, the first two hours of the podcast are going to be talking about Nocturne, which is the <laughs> HD remaster, um, mm-hmm. being ported to one good console and one potato. <laughs> one console <laughs> exclusive to <laughs> her babies. <laughs> so you can get it for PS4, or you can get it for Switch. Obviously, the Switch version is made for people who have <laughs> poor life choices. Um, as, I think like this, this came kind of like out of nowhere because it was announced um, as one of the two major announcements as, as part of a what did they call it? Uh, Nintendo Direct, right? No, it was yeah, a Partner Direct specifically. Partner okay, Direct, whatever. Yeah, That's like TEDx mean. and TED whatever. Who gives a Why? shit? Yeah, TED Z. Same thing. But um, it was just it was one of those interesting little nuggets, or one of two interesting nuggets. Unless you're a fan of wrestling, uh, what did you guys think of that whole like experience of the announcement, and then like yeah, just basically the fanfare? Pretty funny because people were like, "Oh boy, it's gonna be Metroid or Zelda." It's like, no, nope. sorry, bitch. I'm Mario. Sorry, it's <laughs> Nocturne. Um, the announcement was so crazy to me because I didn't watch the direct because I thought it was gonna be like like no, twenty minutes nothing. Yeah, I was at work doing. I was at work. I was for like I never watched it. I those. came back to my phone. And I had like twenty thousand pings in Discord. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. That was kind of like what I had going on because I was like, I'm not gonna watch this. I don't really care about Nintendo anyways. But I did predict the other announcement, so whatever. Oh, yeah, you did. That was crazy. <laughs> but um, I. I just got like all these like yeah pings and like people who own, like my real life friends who are just like you like Megaton like they were like look look it's good this thing you like is, is happening and I'm like what <laughs> like I got down. a lot of um, pings too uh, like hours after like did you see this yet yes yes I saw it like ten <laughs> seconds after it was posted okay <laughs> no one pinged me good that's because you're dead to everyone. <laughs> It was, also, it was also pretty fun, too, because everyone else was watching the English Direct, and I was watching the du- Japanese Direct, right? So I saw Shin Megami Tensei five first in the Japanese Direct, because they showed that first and Nocturne second. And everyone else saw Nocturne first and Shin Megami Tensei five first. Mm. So it was a bit of a confusion. Like, so I was like, no, it's not Nocturne. That's weird. It's so They, it's they even do their reveals left to right. whatever you know how the joke goes yeah it was a justified decision though because to me the japanese fans would be more invested in a nocturne re-release than a smt5 right and people in the west care more about smt5 over nocturne that's at least my rationale maybe if you're deep into the fan base the smt5 meme is so strong in the west that you could say that but probably if you do like a survey of the main Western fan base, they probably know Nocturne more. Just in the general psyche. There are a lot of Nocturne memes out there. People probably have a generally higher visibility of it than Five. I, I think Nocturne trending higher on Twitter than both Atlas and Shin Megami Tensei Five was pretty telling. Yeah. And, right. You know, I will be honest that I'm more excited for Nocturne than SMT5. Uh, I'm excited because it's coming sooner. Yeah, I'm. Wow. I, I, so one of the things that they did is they they announced the release date, which is amazing. It's actually uh, what is it? It's um, October 29th, so it's super super close. Well, if you're in uh, Japan or if you're pre-ordering the Japanese or Asian Chinese. release, yeah, yeah. China, so like, you're in luck, and you can just play them right away. I pre-ordered it as already. Um, I think they just did. They just say 2021 spring for it's spring, spring yeah. 2021. So I think that's um, end of Which, March at the soonest. So, by the way, yeah, 
I'm going to come yeah. out hard and say actual release 2022 quarter three. That's my estimation. <laughs> For SMT5. Uh, yeah. People are looking at that. It's very funny. People are like, Wow, we got a release date for SMT five. Like, <laughs> no, no, you no, got that, a release estimate. Yeah, the release the release estimate, estimate for SMT five is just twenty twenty one. They don't give us yeah, a, exactly. any estimate at all for like what's yeah, like, season. Oh boy, next year I can play it. Like, you're probably not going to play it next year. Just chill. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be playing it this year because I pre ordered what now four copies I think. Of Nocturne? Yeah, that one's still spring yeah. 2021. So. Yeah. So, nice, bro. I will say that, like, one of the interesting things is they announced a collector's edition and kind of like a callback to the original collector's edition for the vanilla version. They had that, um, they're, they're having another version of the Amala Drum um, thing, but instead of being an incense burner, it's an aroma lamp that you plug into the wall. So it sucks because I don't have to use a um converter majigger so i can actually use it oh yeah because it's japanese only so hey, think about that plugs. you're right <laughs> you have to go to best buy and buy no, an adapter for a scented nightlight fucking nerd. it looks cool too i want one the uh the nightlight's made out of uh ceramics or uh porcelain i'm not sure which but so it's very fragile which it's not cool. cheap material that would be fun to ship what yeah i want to do what i want to do is i want to take it and then um Create another cast so I can um, so I can do more, <laughs> make more of them. <laughs> wow. Okay, so you can pirate it. Cool. Good idea. Well, yeah, I, I mean, mentioned that. You can, might as well. Can, you can hide that one and then idea. use a you know one that might break instead. Exactly. And then also, I don't know. Like maybe it would be kind of cool to <laughs> sell them on eBay for fifty, sixty dollars. You're just I'm just joking about piracy, and now you're just laying out the plan. <laughs> Atlas, I did not have any part in this. All the finance crimes are LaRue. <laughs> are out the window. No yeah, but, but, um, sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, Nocturne is uh, the 29th of October, and then the English release is spring 2021. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, a long wait for us. That's over six months just for. Yeah. Just learn Japanese. You, got, you only you have like a couple months to learn it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's. I'll say that this this collector's edition has me more excited than the actual game, if only because the book is it's based on the Ayakashi month I Ayakashi Monthly, that book that uh, or that uh, magazine that uh, Hijiri works for, and apparently it's supposed to be like a thing that what if he wrote or what if he actually released the next volume during the conception, like that's it's supposed to be themed around that and it's written by. Uh, it's written by the same guy who did the Megaton Maniacs book. Mm. So, that so it's going to be really good. Yeah, it's going to be really, really good, or at least um, like calorie dense in terms of information. <laughs> uh, Nobuyuki Shioda is his name. So the fact that he's connected to to authoring that book means that it's going to be another one of those like if you're super interested in the lore and the history of Nocturne, it's probably going to be one of the like must haves. And there's a soundtrack with like 37 songs, but I don't think that matters as much. <laughs> yeah, if you're a real OG, you already have that on your phone. Just yeah, like yeah. fierce battle as your as your uh, your wake up. Your well, this one is supposed to have a new piano arrangement on it. Yeah, oh. which, okay. hopefully it's a piano arrangement of fierce battle. There's an <laughs> implication on the website too that they may re-release the soundtrack at some point. So if you did not get the collector's edition, or if the English version does not have the soundtrack which it probably won't um then you might be able to get it at some other point in time yeah and then so what's this box does it come in the box i see that thing what the hell is that it's all stuffed in there um if it's like the other one it's gonna be it's it might be just all stuffed into the into that giant uh cash cube shape maybe yeah. not sure i but... think it's going to be yeah but it's like that whole thing, the whole limited edition thing has been marred with like bad news because it's sold out in like 30 minutes. And then like people automatically list, relisted it on Amazon <laughs> and Amazon doesn't didn't 
separate the like scalping listings and the official listing, so it's actually uh-huh. the thing. But you would you have to the only way to know would be to see the check who the seller is. When it's an Amazon um, pre order, it'll say it's fulfilled by Amazon. If it says literally anything else, then it's not. Yeah. And people were just buying from the scalpers for like thirty to I think it was originally like only like thirty to forty dollars more, but then it became like eighty dollars more, and now it's like six hundred dollars more or five hundred dollars more. Christ, for a scented nightlight, folks. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> no, All this other content will be digitally available in a week. No one's well. Some people scan the Megaton Maniacs, but no one. People put it will up. scan the book. People will upload the soundtrack. Not what necessarily else? for the book. A soundtrack, yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna share my book. I'm, I'm gonna scan it for me, and that's it. <laughs> You're a piece of shit. You're a bourgeoisie buy it, buy it fuck. Yourself. Buy it yourself. You bought I, five I, copies. No one else can buy it because you're a, you're a pig. You're a little <laughs> pig boy. See, seeing the resale for so much, I'm kind of like I should probably just sell like two of them, and then use those two to buy a switch. The earnings. <laughs> I mean, at this point, aren't they like five hundred dollars for just one collector's edition? Yes, it is. And the book is probably going to sell for more alone. Yeah, I, I think so too. That's like Mega Ten Main Axe does, is like that. It's like fifty bucks back. So. You got to be a, a man of the people. You got to scan that up there and upload it for I've, free. I've done a lot of that already. I've done enough free things that I, I'm allowed to be a scumbag. Do it. Do it. <laughs> but send I, me the magazine, and I'll I'll scan it. I'll be a man of the people. The main thing that I wanted I don't to really care. I'm never going to read it. The main thing I wanted to bring up in terms of the collector's edition or even just the release in general is the hideous box art. By far the ugliest thing I've ever seen in terms of Mega Ten box arts. <laughs> is the one where he's like doing the, the wacky, uh, wavy, inflatable tube man dance? Is that what I'm well, looking at? I don't know what. I think that's the co- the. Um, I think that's going to be the cover or case for the soundtrack. But the the box art is like um, the Nocturne box art. If someone peed on it, and <laughs> like, it's so annoying. It's so ugly. I, I hope they give it like a metallic gold sheen, so it doesn't look so bad. Sure, it's kind of weird like, they chose this color. Why does it go for the the yellow? They they gave the um, Strange Journey uh, Redux uh, collector edition a gold yeah. sheen on it. So if they do mm. it for this, it might it might look better. Making things gold is stupid. But Who's yellow is even gold? worse. Yeah, yellow is way worse. Yeah, yellow is just a worse gold. Gold is bad already. Cause, look, because that original um, art piece of him, like with his arms up, you know, it's all red, so it's kind of like, oh man, it's d- super demonic. Yeah, this one, it's like, dang, he's in a world of urine. Like, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> world of strength. World. I, of I don't like how washed out the art is because it's really highly detailed and it's got a really nice yep. atmosphere, and it's just ugh. all lost. That's all PP. Yeah. So um, if you if you get that and you actually like that cover art, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Print um, out another version of it and just slip the red one in there. There you go. Sounds good. The GameStop tech. The next the next part of the Nocturne controversy comes from the Chinese and Korean versions of the game. So after a couple days, I think um, three days or so after the announcement. They had a live stream where, after the live stream, they updated all the websites except the U.S. website to show like descriptions of the characters. The very bottom of the character description for the Korean and Chinese websites clearly states that Raido and Goto will not be appearing in the games. And I think the funniest reaction I saw was the Chinese fans on Facebook were calling it the castrated version of the game. <laughs> <laughs> They're not wrong. <laughs> So what are they gonna do if they don't? Are they just gonna put in Dante and stuff? I don't know. They are definitely not putting in Dante because uh, otherwise he would take the spot on the website. Yeah, which he yeah. Is not. It's just not gonna have that encounter. It's just like it moves on to the next chapter. It's like all right, well. The speculation is they're going to get vanilla. Which I, I hope. I actually really hope that's the case because that would be interesting. So I could not hear you. Go ahead. <laughs> It would be a two-minute cutscene if you just stand there in silence by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, a, a text box appears and it's blank, and there's just a blank screen, and it cuts back to your character, and he's just reacting to something that isn't happening. That's a good not idea. That, not that he has any emotions when he when sure, yeah. 
He's a protagonist of a JRPG. He doesn't have any feelings. I don't know. I, I started playing um, a Megami Tensei game today, and one time the guy shook his head, and I was like, whoa, that's a lot of emotion. <laughs> yeah, but then he, then he started Naruto running immediately after, so they were like, all right, this guy <laughs> is on the spectrum. <laughs> he is on the spectrum. He does not have feelings. I don't know. And I, I will like just like a random. If you walk group. past a train, does your character just start staring at it in, like inexplicably? You can't stop. Yeah. Isn't that isn't most people who see a train? You just look. You have to look. Mm. Yeah. You just starts. have to watch it go by. So I'm, I'm interested because I was looking at like the Chinese laws regarding censorship and, um, and media stuff. And there's some weird stuff there that I, I'm like, oh man, this could apply to basically anything in Nocturne. <laughs> They're yeah. very, very inconsistent about yeah. the how they do it. Yeah. And they then, don't like skeletons, which I'm very against. They still have media with skeletons in it. Yeah, you guys in gotta China. not, you gotta stop hating on skeletons. I think they have rights. I think they're people just like us. Yeah. Um. Another, another, the other thing was uh, the Korean. Uh, they had released a statement about two months ago saying that they're going to crack down on uh, restrictions regarding imagery and video games. So I'm like, I went over their rule thing and it's also really obtuse and basically any of the stuff that they say could, could apply. Um, And they didn't. And for the record, the Koreans got the vanilla version of Nocturne, the one without um, Dante or true demon ending. They did not get, um, they did not get the Chronicle version. But I think they got maniacs. I couldn't. I couldn't find any definitive evidence one way or another for that one. I saw a post about it that they had gotten maniacs before, but I don't know if that was. Yeah. So let's get to, let's get the meat of this. Why is this being censored in China, and Korea? Because I, the, the thought is that it because he's because Rido's from Taisho era Japan. Japan and he killed a lot of Chinese time. people. Yeah, J- Japan committed war crimes again. He has a gun, <laughs> and and the, so that era is just like um, a sore Touchy spot, stuff. especially for yeah, yeah, especially for Korea. So I think that's part of it, potentially. Um, I don't know. There, there. I just couldn't really figure out another reason. I'm like, maybe the maybe the uh, fiends are a problem, which is why I'm I was leaning towards them doing vanilla because maybe they're like, oh, no bones, please. Well, well I, removed, I could see though. China doing that and then be like, well, since China's, you know, complaining and Korea's complaining, we'll just give them the same version. Yeah. And I was told that there's two different versions of the Chinese games, typically, like a Hong Kong version and a, another Chinese version, but I could not find any information to support that. It was just <laughs> What's the difference between those two? Like, uh, the different types of Chinese, simplified and um, whatever the other one is. Uh, uh, I thought you were talking about in terms of censorship. Like, Hong Kong was like, alright, skeletons are fine, but war crimes? Hong Kong had its own well, has kind of? Yeah. They're an autonomous region, technically, sort of. Not Not so much anymore. They got Tiananmen pretty hard. There's another interesting thing that they did with uh, the remaster is that they announced uh, that they're <laughs> adding a merciful mode, which is funny because Maniacs. Well, I mean, they're putting it on Switch. Yeah, well, that's that's. I think that's the main reason. But Maniacs, <laughs> they're the one of the additions besides uh, True Demon Ending and uh, Dante. It was a hard mode, which was it's historically famously one of the worst hard modes in yeah. Mega Ten because it's poorly designed. But it was a selling point when it first came out. Of course, yeah. For fucking Mega Ten, so like they get hard at the idea of like endlessly grinding to beat a boss. It's yeah. Like, oh look, I spent forty hours and I beat Mott in Maniacs. It's like okay, what did you get from that? Grinding for the currency, yes. Maka was even worse. Yeah, it's it's such an awful. And then then you have the hard type, which to me is like not any better. But whatever. Uh, that's, version, right? that's, that's free not... DLC. Merciful mode is free DLC, yeah. and it's not included on the DLC page. But there's a DLC page um, for a Nocturne remaster. I my thought is that it's probably going to be cosmetic stuff, like oh, you're going to be able to play 
um, Nocturne, but maybe Demi Fiend looks like a friend. <laughs> Demi uh, Fiend a diaper and a binky. I can't imagine him wearing costumes. Like they'd probably just like give him different colored pants. Like here's the pants from If. Here's samurai <laughs> pants. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> you don't even bother giving him upper body models for different clothes. They're like, look, you can have new oh. shoes. Oh, uh, that's I'm, that's I'm the good for that getting, getting rid of those buy, shoes. Yeah. I hate those shoes. Yeah, those shoes. What $50 are those? DLC shoes. <laughs> the first time I buy DLC is to get rid of his shoes. I beat shoes like some Yeezys or something. The other thing I'm thinking is gonna it's gonna be like it might be more stuff like the Diamond Realms type thing versus fan service, which I wouldn't mind either. But I, like I frankly probably won't buy any DLC regardless of what it is because DLC is evil. Um, I'm- yeah, I'm definitely not buying it. I think it's going to be um, items to make the game easier, yeah. even on top of a merciful yeah. mode. Shit like that. It's probably not going to be actual content, I don't think. Although, it, I mean, it might be. It'd be interesting if they actually developed real content after the fact. Well, there's all yeah. that prototype and um, tech content. Use some existing shit to make a new yeah. section. That'd be cool. But yeah, and- it'll probably be some kind of like junk like that where it's like, EXP potion, or like how they had in um in a apocalypse, where they have yeah. like the grinding zone where you could just get a million dollars for free or whatever. It's like, Ooh. what is this? What are we doing here? Um, Yamai yeah, is the director for this project as well, and he did uh Maniacs too. So I don't know. It's possible he did help with the original director's cut of this. So. Yeah, he should know what he's doing with it. Yeah, I I have some faith in Yamai. I mean, but he also was involved with Strange Journey Redux. So, yeah. Every rose has its thorn. So, I don't know what your problem is. uh, Um, I I think it's funny in his um, interview, he mm -hmm. talked about the Dark Souls. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I hate that, actually. He actually used it in a serious context, saying that it. It's dark. See, laughing when he said it, Nocturne is the Dark Souls of JRPGs. It, it made me want to like punch the screen. Like, well, in the context, it makes sense because it has this reputation of being super hard, and that's why they added the uh, merciful mode. It's not actually that hard, though. It's just a really yeah. steep learning curve for newbies. Yeah, yeah I, it's very unforgiving. Which I, frankly, I was surprised reading that because I didn't know that it being notoriously hard was a thing in Japan. I, I assume that they were intelligent, but I guess they're also subhuman like most men. <laughs> it's it's it was really also s 3 so before all they had was 1 and 2. And those are like <laughs> hard games, right? The, oh, the guy who played the demo for the, um, the Unveil stream, he almost died during the um, promo. He was on Merciful Mode in level 24. <laughs> Dude. Probably had a gun like against his back, and was like, "If you die, <laughs> you die." Die in game, die for your life. Yeah, so I think people are still gonna die a lot in the game, even with all that. So I'm, I bet you I'll never die in that game. Um, uh huh. So that that uh, like kind of like tying into when you um talking about your mind that uh, interview for Famitsu. Like I thought it was interesting when he talks about how the reception initially for Nocturne was really poor. Like and then how it kind of shifted in from being like a hated game by critics and yeah. by fans to being considered a god game, whatever that means. It's like a cult classic phenomenon. But it's yeah, like, but it's dumb. Like, <laughs> like people hate change so much that they'll be like, "Oh, this game, it, it's so different from SMT 2 Why is it not like the game that came out twelve years ago?" <laughs> It it was the same for four as well. People were super angry when it was set in a medieval world with samurai. That's true. And they were pretty vehement about it. It was, I mean, there was a lot of controversy about four's or initial release, and then everyone got the game and they're like, "Oh, this is not what I expected." Yeah, even though they know the big twist is on the back of the box. (laughs) That's true. They they don't really hold that card close to their chest collective chest <laughs> but i think it's interesting they, they even mentioned something about how they're trying to keep the game as close to the original as possible 
because the whole point of the remaster is for like the original fans. And then on top of that, they mentioned that there's like something like 4,500 uh, edits to the graphics in order to make it as faithful to the original art as possible. I thought that was interesting because I was watching the Nocturne documentary today and um, they mentioned how they come up with, they came up with the special lighting and um, the special cell shading style in order to kind of not only emulate the um, like Conoco art as close as possible, but also to kind of come up with some of the, the artistic choices that they end up having, which is literally the red light reflecting, casting of blue shadows. I thought that was really interesting. So I wonder if the the 4,500 changes are just to kind of make sure that that stuff doesn't get broken in remastering. Uh, hopefully. Uh, yeah, and hopefully he doesn't keep overworking himself because he looked dead tired during that stream. <laughs> he, he looks sad. Like, I know that it was definitely like a fatigue element, but it was also like he was like beaten. Like he just needed to like, yeah, he's need, he needed a nap. Or whatever, whatever your mind does to calm down. He needed his like uh, own a hole or something. Looks from... Whoa! Oh, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> what in the world? Oh, I was just addicted to opium. You went own a hole? Come on, I, bro. I, I, I'm, I was just going with what I what I figured. He looks like an own a hole type of guy. <laughs> I don't know about uh, that. That's way more <laughs> insulting than my race joke. And anyway, I, uh, I thought it was. He made strange journey redux, and I'll never forgive him. Is what I'm saying. Oh, that's a great <laughs> game. It was weird so, saying that. It was weird seeing them talk about the uh, the fidelity with the graphics, not the graphics, the lighting. And most people I see making complaints about the game are talking about the lighting, how bad it looks. Really? Yeah. They're saying that it, it ruins the atmosphere or whatever. The the new version. Yeah. I'm like, calm down. Mm -hmm. Like you you like it. It looks muddy in the original. Like just shut up. Yeah, the original looks very bizarre, which works in the otherworldly areas, like mm -hmm. um that highway and you fight Hellbiker or whatever. Biker? It looks very huh? It's a maker. Hellbiker, yeah. You fight him at some point, right? On a highway or some shit. Anyway. Yeah. The light there looks really cool. Really interesting. So all the settings like that are interesting, but when you're kinda of in the city like normal, it kinda of looks janky and weird. I think we're in the sewers, it looks weird. Yeah. It does look great a lot of the times the original version. So what do you once mean? The actual game, we'll see if it looks normal because this is still pre release footage. So, yeah, I assume that the person or the um, PlayStation 4 version will have some graphical options. The Switch version probably will not, just like Scramble. Yeah, that makes sense. The Switch can probably barely run it. <laughs> yeah, um, there is probably going to be some issues there, honestly. And it's also worth noting that, um, Fans immediately recognize that the uh, sound files are still compressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really unfortunate. And one of the things that I was really hoping they would take the time to fix, but apparently not. It's already over, what, 90% of the production done or development done for yeah. this. It, they're probably mm -hmm. not going to fix it. Probably not going to change, no. But you can hear Fierce Battle with like shitty clipping and peaking in the audio. And that's what you want to hear, you know? <laughs> You really want to hear it fucked up bad. Yeah, first battle. Keeping close to the original. Hmm? That's what they meant when they said they want to keep it like the original. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Get up. Part of the difficulty is difficulty hearing good music. Um, another thing that <laughs> this like announcement spurred on was a lot of fan work, fan projects. Like, a lot. Like, I've never seen so many people decide that, hey, I'm going to start translating X. Um, so we saw that one of the old uh, Nocturne like four four panel gag comics, like someone resumed translating that, and then another one got started. <laughs> so it's like we have those two things. I think I, for, I can't remember what the other projects that we saw that are Rido manga. Oh yeah, the Rido manga is being continued, and there was something else that was like Nocturne adjacent, but I can't remember what it was. You mean the Maniac translation? Oh, um, uh, Chronicles got an update. The fan patch. Oh yeah, and, and now that no one needs the, the Chronicle <laughs> fan fan thing anymore, they fixed the problem. That was like one of that the game breaking thing where you couldn't do true dooming ending or whatever. So that's fixed now. So you can play Chronicle and then you can play it again 
in high quality and compressed audio on the PS4, presumably. Compressed audio is the only way. Yes. Yeah. The like how, brand. like how they intended. Um, is there anything else you guys want to bring up about Nocturne? Uh, I do want to say um, that the voice acting for the English people suck, especially Demi Fiend. Tokyo Live or whatever. I was one of the. It sounds way too young. He sounds like fourteen or thirteen. He sounds like a twelve-year-old sounding like a twelve, like trying to sound like a sixteen-year-old. That's what it sounds. like. All these characters like twelve years old or whatever. No, him, um, him, and Chucky and Isamu are all taking uh, graduation exams. She complains about it at the start of the game. Oh, but they're Asian, though, so they could be, like, 12 and still be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, my gosh. That's a positive a racist stereotype. It's every <laughs> podcast. <I do. laughs> I'm allowed to be racist against Asian people again, okay? It's fine. I'm off the hook. Uh, anyway. Next point. Yeah. Next point. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm definitely using the Japanese voices because I prefer them. Yeah, um, and yeah the, the voice acting seemed pretty rough for the English. Yeah, I might stick yeah that's that kind of hit or miss with the, some of them, whereas it's a lot more consistent with the Japanese actors. See, I, I thought they were all fine in terms of the, 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 the delivery of the lines was fine. I just didn't agree with the tone of voice for each character. I felt like they're all miscast. Um, Hikawa was close, but... Um, I felt like they made him too not smug sounding because he's supposed to sound like pretentious, in my opinion, because he says things like April is the cruelest month and he wants to have a world that sucks. So <laughs> I feel like it's the, the voice they chose. If, if it's only for the trailer, that's fine. But if it's the actual voice, I don't think it suits him. It and needs more uh, presence. Presence, but also like in celery. I don't know how to describe it. Like should have gotten like a Jeff Goldblum to do him. Oh, he would be good. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, we have to um, uh, make the world worse. It's got to be worse. <laughs> yeah, it's like Glib's ideal world is the worst world. Uh, <laughs> wow. So the other big announcement from that thing, the mini direct, was Shimigami Tensei Five. Um, a lot of a lot of cool things spawned from that, including. Such amazing concept that, as that it might be a sequel to Nocturne. And, um, oh boy! <laughs> and it might. Be Why? Where did that? E- who even? Is it because the adjacency thing? Like they were both mentioned at the same time. So yeah, it, yeah, it, probably. Okay. Not even since this one, it was happened for before. The the thing to rem- to remember about um, SMT five or for Nocturne specifically to go backtrack a little bit. Something Spider pointed out um, a while ago. I don't think she pointed out in the podcast, but she mentioned that. Uh, well, actually, I don't know. I'm speaking for you. No, I, it's fine because you know what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> she mentioned that SMT Nocturne's like remaster was probably started like a couple years ago because they mentioned it like in 2018, and then they had it in subsequent polls. And yeah, of course, and Yamai even said that it was a result of a poll, which I don't know which one he was referring to, because they do one, like, every year. So, like, Nocturne was probably in the works for quite some time, and I don't think that it was something where they were like, we're gonna make SMT5 a sequel to Nocturne, we might as well remaster Nocturne. It was probably just two different, separate things where they're like, yeah. remaster Nocturne will make money, and also SMT5 was was will not make that much money because it's on a horrible console. I think it was under consideration before the 25th anniversary, honestly. Sure. Yeah, people have been there asking was, for that forever. Yeah, they have been asking for that forever, and there was a ton of Nocturne merch for the 25th anniversary. A ton. Yep. Yeah. Which now, like in retrospect, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense why the super, super duper rare uh, lottery figure was a remake of the Nocturne lottery figure. But and that two thousand dollar Magatama, yeah, and the two thousand dollar Magatama, which mm. I'm gonna buy. Um, yeah, the necklace, the the ugly demi fiend ring. There's a lot of like merch that they released for Nocturne, and it like out of context, it didn't make any sense. But in context, it makes a lot of sense now that we know that Nocturne remaster is happening. 
in regards to SMT5, I felt like the trailer kind of sucked now that I've had time to like not be super hyped, if only because it's exactly the same as the second trailer, just changed a bit. <laughs> Which, I don't know, it's, it's, it's whatever. He's reading a book this time. No girl, which is good because um I thought he was the girl. <laughs> you see this motherfucker's haircut? What the hell is he doing? He's wearing a a suit made out of flowers. School uniform like what is that? What school has flowers all over the uniform? Uh the school this is of the Christ. school of being gay in Japan. At first I thought it was like a cult uniform or something, because I look I had I saw people behind them wearing stuff too, and they had like different uniforms and stuff. But it was weird, I don't know. I hope th- I hope this kid is mercilessly bullied by every antagonist. Well, uh, his bangs aren't even even. I hate this so much. He kind of looks kid. like Flynn to me. It's he so like it's with, like you look like, at Nanashi and you're like, damn, uh, protagonist design has gone downhill. And then it's to this point, it's like uh, it's just gonna get worse. I think it's a huge step up from the uh, Nanashi because I've always hated Nanashi's eyebrows. They're like some of the. <laughs> Like it's so dumb looking. I don't like, like his jumper either. Everything about him is dumb looking, but then everything about this guy is even dumber looking. So, like Michael, uh, what's the guy Back to the Future? Is that Michael J. Fox? Yeah. Michael J. Fox. Yeah. This guy yeah. cut his hair. He's got a. He's got. Um, <laughs> I keep wanting to say Aspergers. <laughs> <laughs> what's the one where you shake all the time and it's not real, but everyone shakes all the time and they pretend they have it? Yeah, that one. So anyway, that guy cut his hair. Uh, yeah. I rather like the design, actually. I think it kind of fits with the high fashion vibe that a lot of Megaton has. <laughs> I just a, a Michael J. Fox joke. <laughs> I know. Go ahead. Let it rip. Let's do it. Well, the Michael J. Fox, that's the, the guy from Back to the Future? Or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that looks like the D2 protagonist. I was saying he cut yeah. his hair because he shakes all the time and he fucked it up. No, see, but I was gonna say that. Yeah, yeah. Go if, ahead. If if Michael J. Fox was smart, instead of calling his foundation uh, the Michael J. Fox uh, Foundation, he should have called it the Shake Shack. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> it's good branding because right. it's it's catchy and you oh, know yeah. it gets the point across right away. It's like oh, it's shake, you know. Right. Anyway, that's what we were on the same floor. Uh, you said before that you didn't like the trailer because uh, it seemed too similar. I yeah, thought it's very that, similar. It's like, I thought it was interesting because, like, thematically really different. I, I felt like it was almost no, kind, of, um, yeah, kind of. I mean, like, the other one made a big deal about the uh, it had the Shrine of Glory and it had the uh, Bible verse talking about the, the flood from heaven. But this one that says the God is dead. So I'm like, what's happening in this? I'm like, it's kind of like, I can't really tell what's happening, what's supposed to happen in the game. Unless it's like two different both, alignments. But weren't, I felt like both. The trailers do that same thing. They bring, they basically have a strong law emphasis, but they're showing that the world is chaotic, despite that it's the like the law imagery. They show mostly just law. I mean, they show only law and chaos demons, and they show the same places. They they both show Tokyo Tower, except Tokyo Tower standing in this version. They both show that same uh, tunnel. They both show Shinagawa yeah Station. highway tunnel with the desert yeah. all around. It well, looks very. Um, the second show that had the strong law imagery was the, the uh, one with the angels together. But even then, after that, they said God was dead. So it's like, I think that was the point. This, this yeah. setting looks very um, SMT four when you go to the the reactor and you go to the law world. You know, even blasted. About? You mean right? Yeah, blasted. blasted Tokyo. There you go. It's very blasted Tokyo vibe. Yes, it is. Um, yes. I forgot what I was saying now. When did they remember ne- Neptune or Pluto? Is that his name? Yeah. Pluto, yeah. Was it the big squid cool. thing with the big face, or whatever? Yeah, he was a big like tank thing that you shot all the time. But when I say that I, I the that the trailer was dis- is disappointing to me, the considerations that I was having is uh, one, the amount of content the original trailer has, like like it has all that text that to me gives more of a uh, understanding of the world this this one kind of just gives you just a nothing because it's like oh god is dead so uh, yeah it's less than a minute and a half long it's a trailer there's zero gameplay yeah no gameplay was also what is there to say 
Um, I don't know. It's cool that there's a lot of um, Nocturne stuff there. Kind of like how in the first trailer there was uh, Magatsuhi, and this one they had like those uh, towers that I'm pretty sure were in Nocturne too. Mm-hmm. Right? Am I wrong? I think towers, towers to be honest. Uh, probably. Towers. In my world, there's no towers. Leaning they got, tower? They brought down by those planes. Um, an obelisk. But... Is it an obelisk, right? Yeah, what? that's where I went to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't know. So the SMT5 is interesting. The biggest questions for that trailer really come that boil down to who is that guy that um, shakes hands with uh, the guy with the weird hair? Um, what are those demons that are flying around that look like Imp potentially, but literally they don't look anything like Imp and people are just calling it Imp because they don't know anything about Megaton and there's like literally 40 demons that look exactly like that. <laughs> so, I mean, they're Imp-like. Imps are... Like 40 different demons. I, yeah, like, but I imps, are, imps are, aren't e- exclusive to fucking Megaton. They're very Imp-like. They're mischievous, mis- like, small, wiry. All I'm saying is that I looked looked it up because I was trying to just figure out what they were from the first trailer, and there's so many winged demons, and they all basically look the same, and no one, none of them match that demon, and like Imp doesn't look anything like it unless I mean could, could be a redesign, could be a redesign for sure, but in this that's that's like the same for anything. It, it could be a gargoyle. It could be. Um, a million other winged demons. So, so everyone calling it imp is kind of just like why, to me. It seems like he slightly redesigned Angel as well. They're using the old Angel design, the SMT two Angel, but it has darker wings. Yes, it has a spear and a halo. I feel like, yeah, I feel like that. Like maybe when you had pointed out the halo thing to me, I was trying to like figure out why it would be different. And I, then I'm like, the conclusion I came to is, oh, what if it was because, oh, God's dead, so now their halos are all dark because they're sad. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> because you Black know. Lives Matter? Well, no, okay. someone earlier, too. I forget, I forget who. But uh, he mentioned that it could be, like, not the same design that's actually in the game. Because in Nocturne, when you die, the angels you see when you die, they're not the same as the angels in the game. They're not the same design, exactly. But that's, di- but that's different. Cause- I don't know. Because the, Noc- the Nocturne Death thing was specifically supposed to be a reference to uh, Paradisio, I believe, which is part of the Dante um, Goes to Hell, whatever the... Yeah. The poem is. Dante's Bogus Adventure? Yeah, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> We've all seen you know that what movie. What talking about? Um, what is it called? Divine the, Comedy. The Inferno. Divine he Comedy. He said Paradiso. Paradiso. Divine Comedy, oh, yes. Thank dumb you. motherfucker. Yeah. Glib knew you. You got it wrong. Have you it? even read Paradise Lost? Yes. yes you oh, have really? to read it. Yes, Who wrote you it? Have to read it. It's old and it. Mil- it's not fun to read. No, John Mill didn't write it because he was blind. He dictated it to scribes. Wow, idiots! Okay. I hate idiots. <laughs> okay. Who destroyed the art for the first <laughs> print of, of John Milton's Paradise Shut Lost? Up. If you don't know, then you're an, you're. It was it was Leonardo da Vinci? No, you're dead. <laughs> I, I hope that I can't tell these facts are real now. <laughs> you hope you die, Neb. Fuck you. Yeah. All right, next news item. Uh, S and T five. No, 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 is bad. no, no. It's <laughs> the last. The last thing about S and T five that I wanted okay. to talk about is the dumb "Who is that guy?" like thing. There's a lot of other like. Who oh, the that? Lightning Man. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, it can My... be literally anyone. Boy, sure. It <laughs> does. Izanagi. It literally doesn't matter. It's Izanagi. It's Izanagi sure. Why not? But people are humoring like bizarre. But things. where's where's his big knife sword thing that he's got? Okay, you obviously don't canonically about... he has that like in Persona Four. That's where don't he first appeared. Don't worry, man. like Toku, bro. You already know. Yeah. So become a writer. Did you say Toku? <laughs> I said Toku. He's got a big. He's got a big. Did you say that? Albert. He's gonna say uh, Henshin, and it's gonna summon a, a giant Megazord. No one knows what you're talking about. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's literally like he's having a seizure and he's just kind of making noises. I don't know what you know what Henshin means. I don't know what Henshin means. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm a normal human, so I don't I don't. <laughs> that's Henshin not... is the phrase they say when they transform. Transform into what? 
What are you talking about? You know, whatever the, whatever the, 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 the what's it called? The Sentai guys? Or Toku? I forget one of those two. I don't, I don't, I don't watch Sentai. I don't know what yeah. you're talking about. That's it's the Japanese man. word for transformation. <laughs> no, we, I'm, it's, Insane. I'm just saying that I don't I don't watch hentai. So. <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> not perverts. <laughs> Did you keep this PG thirteen? Uh, that was, that was, that was gonna get <laughs> of, this is gonna get age of the you glib talking about hentai. We're 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 trying to talk about Megami. We're gonna lose all of our subscribers now. They all they all care so this is a Christian podcast. And you're out here talking about so also the the narrator Let's talk about some non news. What else? Yeah, Lucifer was the narrator. He was telling us that guy's dead, so that's probably maybe not even true. Because who does Lucifer struggle against? Yeah, because Lucifer's like, God. If God's dead, why is he even talking to us? Why is he taking over the world? Because Lucifer can't do anything. Maybe because all of his demon army is are is imps. Talked? And an imp is just one letter away from the weak, weakest type of human. So the <laughs> simp? Oh, whoa. imps are simps? That changes everything. Okay, so let's talk about Persona news, but let's blast through it as fast as we can. <laughs> yeah. so, the first thing, Persona 4 PC hit 500,000 sales. Persona 4 Golden. Folks, we're back to the topic at hand. Persona 4 yeah. Golden. The best video. It by, what was it? By July, right? So, or before, yeah. before July. Was that two weeks worth of sales? <laughs> Basically, <laughs> however many weeks. Steam Spy before we like did this to see if it's like jumped up more. Yeah, whatever. Who cares? I cares. Um, but it's cool because that means that we're probably gonna get more ports. Uh, I mean, I think that it's kind of inevitable now because they're just gonna port everything. Yeah, it's like I don't think it's an extremely high effort uh, endeavor to take an old game and port it to PC. I think when they realize they can make big sales off of that, which people have been doing for years, the Japanese are just now discovering this technology. They're they're playing Civ, and their science has gotten to the point of like 5,000 BC port to PC. They're like, oh, wow. Let's research this one. Yeah. Check the wiki. And they said yeah. before that, uh, the date they said that it hit 500K sales, it was the 10th of July, and it came out the 13th of June. Wow, that's crazy. That's a lot. And then um, Steam Spy is now estimating it's reached the million potentially. Between five hundred and a million, it's it'll yeah. stay that stay that until it hits past a million. So it's just oh, yeah. an estimate of uh, range. It's yeah. not. I mean, just do better job at calculating Steam Spy. It's not that hard. Oh, can um, we can we take a quick detour, please? About what? I want to take a quick detour into Persona 4. Please click uh-huh. this link. Is Everyone this have posted it. <laughs> now, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk briefly about Persona 4 mods. So, oh man, okay. How many people are sinners? And we're going to evaluate your sins very briefly. Let's, uh, so why don't we do oh, like a thing where you read the name out without describing what it is, and then we just quickly go like 1 to 10... Uh, 10 being it's actually a good idea and one being it's bad and you're probably going to go to hell. Yeah. One is the most cursive one, right? Okay. We'll yeah. start off at the top of the order. The one that Glib brought up that brought to my attention this phenomenon, this cesspit. E-girl Nanako. One. <laughs> Extremely <laughs> cursed. <laughs> Heavily cursed. That's the kind of content we need these days, bro. <laughs> I Come urge on. you. Why does this have the most likes on the page? Because <laughs> we really know the oh audience God. that likes uh, Persona. Don't, let's not forget uh, P3P and and that little boy. Oh um, my God! I don't know where this is going. So let's can we refocus? I urge you to reconsider. Nanako, comma, but she has a big mouth and no nose. Can you please Fire. find that one? Take a look at that. I have seen it. <laughs> this is the second most like one. Similarly cursed. Oh. They made a they made a pair of fellow <laughs> opening replacement. This is a really bad a bad thing that you've done, sir. It's pretty amazing, I'm not gonna lie. It's not amusing. 
It's not. It's concerning, most of all. Oh, he, my favorite. GSD from Do you guys, you guys, uh, you guys missed the, um, you guys missed the one that actually has the highest ratings. It's what's up? Joker and his personas in Persona Five or in Persona Four. Yeah, that's the one with the most likes. Oh, I didn't notice there was more pages. Yeah, I, I literally found that out like just now. There's I just saw the featured section in the top um, page. I was like, oh, huh. This There's is a good one. one. What? In- instead of shadows or items, every chest will always contain the Reaper. He'll just show up and fight you every single time you open a chest. <laughs> Not a good well, mod. Why would you do this? Okay, so I'm, I keep finding ones that are rated higher and higher. So far, the highest rated one is the Yosuke Romance um, mod. So you can actually date your <laughs> So you can be gay. That's cool. Well, you can date like literally that. the worst character in the game. Worse than Marie. Character. They're always bad. Oh, oh, I see. You gotta have a bro. Mm, having, having Yosuke as a bro is like having... Uh... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't keep punching down. You can call it Marie. Too point is Yosuke sucks and the fact that people would want to date um, someone like Yosuke speaks volumes to the amount of uh, suffering people have endured to think that Yosuke is actually worth dating. <laughs> Hold on, here's a good one. You ready? Adachi yeah. is a re-character model. Why? <laughs> My favorite was Ninja Adachi. <laughs> Fort- Ninja Fortnite Adachi right now. Ninja Fortnite Adachi. <laughs> That's a very concerning phrase. A lot of these, are like, <laughs> one of them is Naoto, but she doesn't have the hat ever. There's, like, the Persona 4 oh, dancing no. ones. Oh, no. Oh, no. I found the worst one. Are you ready for this? Oh, Jesus. Marie, no shoes. What? <laughs> oh. uh, it only has oh. one like here. I'm gonna, let me like it. Guys, let me like it. Oh. don't do this. That's going to be the thumbnail. Because it's <laughs> oh, the, no. The title of the story is. <laughs> Who did this? The title of the video is going to be um, like Shin Megami Tensei 5 and Nocturne News. And the thumbnail is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> oh, all the comments are mad because she's still wearing her socks. Great. I love this world that we live in. You're the That's one that wanted to look at this horrible. I didn't think we'd find Marino oh. shoes. I didn't think this would happen. <sighs> this this is the, the the best angry comment. She is either fully shoeless or not. You guys are serious. <laughs> They're playing no. <laughs> They're playing no Sir, game. Sorry, we for my lawyer. <laughs> Okay, I was sorry for doing this. Uh, yeah, you are. Oh, sorry. he's he's <laughs> Dachi is ninja, the streamer. Oh, uh, this is really bad. I this is really all rotten. Yeah, but is- uh, all right. So Persona Four is a great game. Make sure you buy it. So yeah, you can mod it. Yep, so you can mod and contribute to this vibrant community that we have. So let's continue our rocket through this information. Yeah, let's go Persona fast. Five R sold 1.4 million units worldwide, so that means 13 million for Persona total, which is nothing if you can consider DX2 and how much money that makes. Probably made yep. more than. Yep. But anyway, it's to the other launched in Taiwan and Korea. <laughs> It sells badly because, you know, Switch. It, it, so it didn't sell that it. badly. Just not. Uh, it's not as good as it could have been. Yeah. I didn't buy it. I also then, don't live in Korea, so. And then more bad news for Persona fans. If you really like the highly acclaimed A1 Studio produced Persona 5 The Animation. You can get it for a cheap four hundred dollars, which is the sale price. That's not the um, the the normal MSRP. 
that's the sale price if you hurry up and act now you can get that with no no new features really the the promotion or the bonuses is that you get to see the OVAs that were shown separately you get to get those as well and you get them in English too so i guess act now if you really want that can't work 400 actual dollars yeah oh, oh I'm sorry. Sorry. Don't get commercials that's crazy you get oh, commercials. okay well, hold on <laughs> suggested real put price oh i mean dollars 98 cents hold on so, retail price 298 dollars 98 cents that's oh, great so it's 300 so actually yeah 100 dollars <laughs> off Think yeah. of that. You could take that hundred dollars and buy groceries. You can put it towards rent. <laughs> Spend three hundred dollars on a shitty anime. I mean, what's the problem? Yeah. Or you could just use that three hundred dollars to almost buy Nocturne Collector's Edition from me. <laughs> um, <laughs> speaking of overpriced things that exist, if there's a new prime or uh, uh, primo or high quality figure that's done. I think it's like one fourth scale of joker joker is the protagonist of persona 5 if you didn't know he's getting a figure through prime one studio they're like one of the biggest high-end uh figure our, our statue manufacturers there's a dx version which comes with a couple of different extra arms and stuff and there's the normal version the dx one runs about a thousand dollars so go ahead and buy that if you really like joker and you really want to ward off anybody from ever visiting your place. <laughs> Nine hundred dollars. Wow. The cool thing, the thing I will say is that what I like about these like high end uh, figure people is that they know that their prices are crazy. So what they'll do is they'll offer uh, uh, in payment plans, so you can pay in installments. Yeah. So if you if you like do you're the, buying a car, yeah. <laughs> 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 Well, you can buy a, a major financial decisions for, about uh, statues. <laughs> yeah, I got a mortgage I got to pay off, but I also got to pay off all these anime figurines first. They have some pretty, like... Someone out there is choosing between lunch, dinner, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and the sweet anime hot glue action I got to put in later. Yeah. For that guy. So, I will say that the actual figure itself doesn't look bad. I actually like how it looks. Just the idea of a, a thousand, or actually in this case, a nine hundred dollar figure, is a little yeah. off-putting because it's just like, why? Um, I don't like the base of it. Then, if you want another um, kind of overrated figure, you this can is buy for it. like Yao. This is for like Fujoshi's, right? This figure. Well, I'm buying it, so <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you have it. Right. I'm not okay, a Fujoshi. <laughs> you say that, but I mean, you have the Joker figure, so all right. <laughs> kind of mad now. <laughs> um, I don't always have to dignify you with a response. No, the other no. Joker figure that's coming out is the Joker Amebo. It's Amiibo. coming out. Oh, Amiibo. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, this, it's so they're releasing two different Amebos. It's Joker <laughs> and it's, uh, I think his name. I think they just call him Dragon Quest Hero. It's the loser from Dragon Quest. He's going to wow, be available. Stop this. Stop uh, so why, right is now. Off? why does he look like he's ripped off from Dragon Ball? What's with that? Yeah, stop. <laughs> you stop the security on the slander right now. Why does he look like the Android 17? What is with that? What's going on? He's got the same this. hairline. It's ridiculous. Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> You can get the you can get them for like what twelve dollars I think is what amiibos cost. So yeah, I think a thirteen about tax. Oh, uh, people have. Them. You can just get them. Um, I would ask now though because I because right now you can pre-order the Joker amiibos and they're, oh their pre-order is like fifteen sixteen dollars for Ooh, no. a dumb little ugly figure. So hurry up and get it for it. Don't buy them, bro. Don't buy them, guys. I bought like seven of them. They're worthless. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I would, has, has, has there been a person in history that's bought a single amiibo in their life? Just yes. one. No, I know a few people who have like a lot. Okay, but just one. Can you think just of one? anyone? Just I bought one? two, no. so like, I'm not a. Oh my, it's me. Okay. I bought one. <laughs> I bought one Kirby amiibo because I think Kirby is cool and I like him. 
Wow, never, you didn't get the never be front of other amiibo if I want. I do kind of want the uh the hero amiibo to be honest, but I don't like the Dragon Quest Lord hero design. If it was Dragon Quest III hero, uh, it doesn't look like the Android. Um, the one the one that's the boy Android. That's him. Yeah, that's him. Oh, that's seventeen. He's the girl yeah. that fucks the Krillin. Eighteen is the girl. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think was oh. wrong with her programming that she, she went to fuck oh. a three foot tall Chinese yeah. guy? <laughs> Stop oh, the probably wished so <laughs> he's been bald since he's been a baby, and she's like, God damn. He's not bald, he's a Buddhist monk. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same thing. <laughs> I will say though, the worst thing about Dragon Ball Z is that they call them androids, but they're cyborgs, and it's really dumb. Are like, you still stuck on this? Cyborgs? Yes, because they're part human. Well, they're made from humans and turned into robot people. Really? I thought they yeah. were born as Oh, okay. No, that's that's why Cyborg from um, the Teen Titans is called Cyborg instead of Android. The, the thing is, the original Cy- the original androids were actually androids. The, the seventeen and eighteen okay. are the ones that are actual. They're people like. Right. The, He's the eight, best. I think. And Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball the original. There was Android Eight, and he was like a freaking like monster thing. But he, I think he was actually. Oh, Aider, yeah. Aider is his name. And then uh, there was sixteen also, and he was full robot. I think the only ones that are actually just. Awesome. Dude, oh, I played oh, on, Dragon Ball too. fighting game, Fighter Z online. Day one, that motherfucker is broken as fuck. I have I like a him. gallery of screenshots of me beating people and then rage quitting as I beat them. And me playing Android 16. Which one's 16? Is good red guy? He, he had the, the red hair. Yeah, and Gohan was motivated to beat Cell because he died or some shit. Oh, yeah. He's kind of like a robber, like a bum in the actual series, but in the game, he's a god. At least he was back in the day. I never liked that one. Like, I think he has, like, his hat. I never liked him either. He looked like a loser. He sucked. Yeah. But in the game, he fucking rules. I mean, he didn't just look like a loser. He was just a loser. Yeah, yeah, yeah he got wrecked. So, um. I would kill Goku. <laughs> that's, a pretty, that's a pretty good uh, Android guy. That's um, fair. Enough. So the other thing, if notice how everything that we're talking about for Persona is just buy this, buy this, buy this, because that's that's kind of what that's all what it's yeah, all about. You see a trend here, folks. Yeah. So I am eight bit. The people who made the Persona Five vinyl that sold out basically, like sold out, and now I think you can buy you can buy it for about a thousand dollars on eBay or yeah. eight hundred dollars. They 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 announced that they're going to do a, um, a repress. Not sure if they're going to do a repress of the original. Um, soundtrack, or if it's going to be the Persona 5 Royal soundtrack. And they also mentioned that they're considering trying to attain licenses from other Atlas titles. So that could very much mean that you might get something like Trauma Center, Vinyl, or um, Etrian Odyssey, or Nocturne, which would make the most sense because it's a thing coming out soon. That's crazy, right? Yeah, I think it sucks. It's all weeb shit. No, they have they have some pretty good things. I bought no, they released Ori and the Brawl soundtrack from through them. That was pretty good. EO has a good soundtrack. I like it a lot. Very comfy. Ray Comfy, what? Okay, Odyssey has a really good soundtrack. Oh, it's very comfy. Yeah, Neo. No. no, no, like the that shitty MMO game where you have to fish or whatever. What? Remember that? You remember oh, that oh. game? <laughs> You're like senile. Hey, all the weebs, you you know what I'm talking about. The people, the people out there will know. The last um, money related. Speaking of white people, yeah. The last money related thing is these people did a cover of a "Life Will Change" from the hit soundtrack of Persona Five. You hear "Life Will Change" once. And never again in the whole the whole game because they only play four songs over and over. Um, <laughs> you can hear a new person. I'm so triggered. <laughs> Kick your ass, you fucking Persona Three standing motherfucker, pretending so, your soundtrack any le- de- depth or length to it. All I'm saying is, bleh. life of change plays every dungeon. You piece of shit. Sure it does. You yes. can so you can donate to this. You get to the final dungeon because you're a casual. 
That's what you are. You're not even a real fan. Yeah, you're right. I only Did you get some cruise ship? Hmm? Did you get the cruise ship? Cruise ship? What are you talking about? Oh, weird. He didn't get to the cruise ship because he's not a real fan, folks. I'm going to disconnect real from gamers. <laughs> <laughs> Real gamers would know what I'm talking about. Persona 5 cruise ship level. <laughs> Everyone type Persona 5 cruise ship in the chat. Um, say Lulu doesn't know the cruise ship. Go on. But they did a cover of this song for charity. I'll put the link in the description if you want to. I mean, I don't know if it's still even going. But like gonna it. We're gonna we're gonna shit on these people real quick. The I'll do a dry, do a drive on these motherfuckers. Kickstarter is like a. No, thing no, we, need to go, we need to go because we still got like another page. That's why the drive by. We're not gonna stop. Two pages. We have Lean two out the more pages. <laughs> we have two more pages of news. Let's get to the rest of the news. <laughs> I'm gonna explode. The next, the, the next, next video opens with them saying "Black Lives Matter," and then their black bassist starts playing. And then right after that, it's just an overweight woman doing like a bad impression of a uh, Lynn. What's her name? The, I think her name is Lynn. Lynn. Yeah. Point is, she sucks. <laughs> yes. Oh so that thing exists. I will say that it's not. This the guy best looks like you also. Heard. It's not the best cover I've ever heard, but I will say that it's cool that it's trying to raise money for whatever thing. I didn't click the link. Um, so that's that's the thing. Just click the link and then just look at the regular guitarist and tell me if it looks like Larue. No one looks not like the bass. Hey, no, not no, the bass. I thought that too. I didn't want anything. <laughs> Doesn't he? You guys have the same haircut. It's not true. That's offensive. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> two, two out of four dentists agree. You can go to the next so, thing now. <laughs> so the next thing, Captain Full Body Switch couldn't even hit 7,000 sales launch week. So that tells you how much people value. Well, so that's just another, long, another in a long line of Mega Ten fans in Japan don't really care about the Switch. Yes. And there's just more evidence of that. Well, the um, Captain is just bad in general. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ka- uh, Aegis Rim got pushed back a bit, but it's going to have the, if I remember correctly, it's going to have the English dub or whatever opening our day one, right? I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be DLC. So that's cool. You're going to hear it all its glory. No one in the world knows what Aegis Rim is. <laughs> but... Although I'm still not fully sure. We've talked about it probably 13 yeah. times. And I'm yeah. still... I don't really know. Yeah. I like the visual novel. Okay. I think so. I love it then. Great. It's, yeah. Also, that character, the main character from Aegis Rimmer or whatever, the, at least the one they're using in all the marketing, she got a Nendoroid very quick. The, really? Probably the fastest Nendoroid I've ever seen them do for an Atlas related thing. And it's like really gross. <laughs> The, uh, I've got my, my Pyro Jack and Jack Frost Nando's right here. I'm looking at them right now. Why is it gross? What's wrong? They're it's, my dresser. The, I think the thing that bothers me is the weird lewdness, and it's because it's a chibi, you know? Like, mm-hmm. she has, one of the things is her lifting up her skirt, and it's a start on her thigh. And it's like, I don't know. Wh- I don't know. <laughs> I thought that was okay. an act on the first. I see what you're saying. I don't like that. Yeah. What is that even for? Like, what does that mean? It, it, mean it, is, it is baffling, but it's also offensive, but in a way that I can't... Maybe I that can be the thumbnail, so if you get more clicks. Yeah. yeah. Do man, go ahead, do that. Marie with no shoes. Uh, Lucifer to redesign. I don't know. Whatever you got. But it's just one of those things that's like, whatever. That's um, weird, yeah. I don't like the... I don't like that she's wearing a skirt. I feel like that can be abused. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not super invested or knowledgeable in regards to Nendoroids because I've only I only own ones that are Mega Ten, and most of them don't have skirts. Then the I think the the black haired girl from Persona Four, what's her name? Yukiko. That, Yukiko, yeah. She, I think she has a skirt, but I've never opened her Nendoroid because it's Yukiko. <laughs> wow, disrespectful. She's the one that does the snark, like. <laughs> yeah. So, 
that aside, I guess we can talk about some of the translation, localizations, and port news. Hold on. This first piece of news, I want to say that I'm right. I was vindicated. Please refer to my earlier statements in which I said that Tom would be back. Of course he'd be back. He wasn't leaving for good. People that announce things on Twitter, they never mean it. Least of all retirements. So as a result, translator Tom is back. He's working on Megami Tensei 2 for the NES. <clears throat> I don't know what the second thing says. Zil O'Eel? What the hell is that? Who wrote that? It, that's the name of the game, though. <laughs> what is Zil O'Eel? How do you not know? Do you want me to kick your ass? I will get on a transcontinental flight right now. So Zil, Zil O'Eel is like this... Uh... It's just an RPG. <laughs> it's one of Koei Tecmo's like only RPGs. It's like oh. long, long oh, so it's not related to Mega Ten. You piece of shit. I didn't put that there. It's not Mega Ten, so I wouldn't have brought it up. Oh, oh okay. First off, that's not true. <laughs> Done. All right. Correct notes. Moving on. Transfer time is back. I was right. I said he'd be yeah, back. Yeah, and then Jim Z- Zayden or whatever working on a, um working on trans- the Chinese version of. Megami Tensei 1 for mobile phones, bringing that over. They're also the person that wrote a summary for the Gaiten Tensei. So if you wanted to know what happens in Gaiten Tensei, they, they were responsible for that like summary translation thing. Okay. I don't know what any of that means, but props to Jim Zayton. Good job. Yeah. yeah. SMT1. You told him about uh, the mobile board. He was talking about how simple it was compared to the original game. Uh, like it had like less stats and like there's less story stuff in it and less demon stuff. You're saying something designed for mobile phones for the early 2000s is more simple? Hmm? I'm, just, I'm just having a conversation, man. Okay, <laughs> trying to bring knowledge to the people. Okay, you've never done that to me when I've said something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the second clip says something, you're like, "Oh, really, <laughs> idiot?" Oh, I'm just trying to, <laughs> I'm just trying to vibe, like. You're not a vibe. This is the vibe. <laughs> it is not. But also SMT1, Nintendo Switch, online, Japanese exclusive. So go ahead and basically just make a Japanese account or whatever, and then you can play it. So the that's Japanese? Cool. Wow, can't, can't wait. Switch accounts every time you want to do that, like play the different games? I don't, play, I, yeah. I don't know how the Switch works. It's, it's, uh, it's not a console. You have to make a new account, though. Why, and, why do they do this? What is the like, I can do it, though. That's fine. What is the ethics? Is, they don't want to translate. I'm free too, so. No idea. And then also, it's confirmed that Megami Tensei One is not going to be on the U.S. version of the Namco collection. Yeah, so this is related to my complaint earlier. It's like they don't want to translate any of this stuff, or what? I guess not. <laughs> not for you. <laughs> not for yeah. the digits. Come on, man! Translator time, help us out. Save us. He's not going to do that. So well, he's working. He's, 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 oh no, this other guy's working on Megami Tensei 1 for mobile. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Fuck um, you, Tom. Well, Tom worked on the translation for Megami Tensei 2 um, that's like in the in progress. He has like a lot, there's a lot of things that Tom did that are like in the queue. Like, I believe he did the first two or maybe all three of the original Devil Children games. And they're like, like the translation part's already done. And I think he already finished Fire and Ice versions. Mm-hmm. So then he, there's like a lot of stuff that's just like it's it, the his part's done, but it's the other people that yeah, need to right, finish. Right. Um, speaking of finish, um, SMT Five trading card game started to be localized by fans Did who are SMT Five trading card Freudian slip. SMT trading card game. It's an alternate universe where we still printed trading card games. But um, this trading card game is called the Digital Devil Story card game. It's basically uh, Persona 1, 2, uh, Soul Hackers, Devil Summoner, and then SMT 1 through Nocturne has cards for all of those things. And th- there's, there's a group of people that are working on scanning and translating everything. Someone else and their friend decided to take the other people's work and... Uh, basically get running on the Steam's 
board game simulator. So now you can actually play it with tabletop simulator. Oh, on it's Steam. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, right. it's a so, workshop it's item. Board game simulator, tabletop simulator. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tabletop yeah. Tabletop yeah. Simulator. You know, it you know what, everyone so knows right. what, it, what we're referring. To. Tabletop. Well, I'm just trying to be accurate. You're not being accurate. It's okay. You're trying to be more broad and in, in general. But I, I, I so, prefer the facts. That's where so I come. So then, it, this is just a what do you call it? It's it's a Steam Workshop thing. So you have to you have to buy the base game, which is Tabletop Simulator, at twenty bucks. So just wait for it to go on sale. It goes on sale often, and you can play it. Uh, Spider played it. What are your thoughts, Spider? Um, it's a little con- consistent with the translations of oh. the cards. Um, Seems like Tabletop Simulator is kind of hard to use, regardless, and it, it's fine. Um, that can be part of the fault of the, the mod maker because you can automate a lot of stuff and you can check stuff and make it easier to retrieve stuff. But if it's bare bones, it's going to be really difficult to use. Those, uh, um, those are all there. You can zoom in and all kinds of stuff and reset the table if, you know, if things get too disorganized and all that stuff. It's all there. It's just tabletops hard to use. Yeah, and if they don't index all the cards properly, it can be a real nightmare. Oh, they have them sorted out on the table. Like you have your law, chaos, demons, your uh, support cards, your character cards, and all that. Um, There's not that many of each. Yeah, it's it's only that first set, so it's only 180 cards right now. Yeah, I have to read these keywords because I'm reading, they provide (laughs) just two examples in the description. Zombie Cop and Yoshitsune. I have no idea what the hell they're talking about with this, with all the keywords. So I would have to read what these keywords mean. There are symbols that might mean resistance or weakness near the bottom. I don't know what that is. Yeah, for that I would refer to the um, the initial project starters, the people, not the people who made the theme workshop thing, but the original people translating because they have literally all the rules translated and described in excruciating detail on their files. Um, we'll, I'll put a link to their uh, their post on Reset Era so you can figure out how the rules work and everything before you get into playing it on Steam Workshop, Tabletop. Oh, tabletop. And they've got a Discord, too, so you can join. Don't join it. Um, they might have some information. Now we, saved, we saved the best for last. Uh, DX2 news. Well, there's more stuff after that. Yeah, the this main... is, folks. This is the true Mega Ten game of the age right now. You know, SMT Five is still in limbo. Nocturne isn't even out yet in terms of the remaster. We're stuck with DX2. Technically, we're the most listened to slash viewed content in regards to DX2 on on YouTube. So, this podcast brings you the so most. It's like... Two people listen. <laughs> 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 there's one American that listens to the official DX2 news, and there's two that listen to us. Yes, I think the biggest news was the was the announcement two point five anniversary. Yeah, yeah. We, we got a couple of really epic demons, and everything else is kind of whatever. Did you guys manage to pull any of these event demons? Of course not. Oh uh, well, you noobs didn't. I did. I pulled uh, almost all of them. Well, that's because you spent a bunch of money because you're a noob. Uh, but nope, 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 nope. <laughs> yes, you did. Nope, you nope, spent nope. a lot of money on rent recently, so I know that you've been spending all your money on DX two. I don't know. I <laughs> so, <laughs> I two. That's a game of three, but two is two. They're different. Yeah, so there's two sets basically. There was a um, there was an event that came out where there was alternate Alice who came with Nebiros and Belial. And they're all centered yeah. around curse element. Shut up. Uh, uh, it's Alice is retarded. Her design is ridiculous. Uh, she drains your mana no matter what every single turn. She can insta kill your entire team if you're cursed. She has insanely high HP. Dodge she has null you. mortal. Yeah, she has dodge and null mortal. It's ridiculous. It's power creep personified. The other two are kind of interesting. Nebiros and Belarel. They also like work around Curse. Nebiros is similar power creep, but you can deal with him. He revives people and does buffs. 
and people die and there's curses, da da da. Belial just does damage, pretty much. Yeah, Belial sucks. Yeah, he kind of kind of looks fun. I got those. He does too, but his he still sucks. Yeah, I got I got those two. I didn't get Alice, but I got the other two. Ah, uh, he sucks. I got I want uh, Alice really badly. I got Alice and never else. Uh, well, you're a noob. Well, oh, you're a noob. So. And I got Kali and and Zhi Wang Mu in the first. Paid a lot. Must be paid one hundred and fifty dollars to see. Wrong. Yeah, you Nebu, pay, a hater. You pay a lot of money. You pay a lot of money. Yeah. So the other set of demons, Kali and Zhi Wang Mu. That's the current uh, set. Everyone knows Zhi Wang Mu from S and T four. I think right. She hasn't really had any other prominent appearances. She does. Prominent. Is the key. Does. What's the other prominent appearance? How do you? Are you kidding? No. We literally just played Soul Hackers. She's in Soul Hackers. She's also How in prominent. She's also in Strange Journey. Okay, I don't, I don't remember. Key, do you know the definition of key word, motherfucker? In you know before she is a she is a plot progressing character. Okay, I mean that's nice, but does she progress the plot in Soul Hackers? Yes, without without her, you can't move forward. I never used her. Well, that's because you suck. No, because I use God with God because I'm a man. I'm an American. And when I need to solve my problems, I solve them missile punch. Okay, or twist off. It, is, it doesn't I mean. matter because Ji Wang Mu sucks in every game she's in. She's especially in, in this game. game. She's pretty good in this game. Okay, whatever. Sucks pretty to good. suck. Anyway, um, uh, Kali is actually not that good. She's kind of power creepy, but kind of a noob uh, character. If you pull her, you're a noob. But she's really strong because she's like, like a kind, of a noob kind of a noob character. Kind of a noob character. She can mess. At the very least, she'd be good for uh, just salty, uh, just salty. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> she'd be very good for for down apocalypse. Yes, um, she'd be. A, but you're still not getting popular, though, so... And this is, like, two yeah, waves. So there's two right? waves of new things coming. So we don't know what the third wave is. Hopefully, it's um, something good. I mean, for the year? It's three waves for the year? No, three waves for the first anniversary event. Yeah, it's three waves for the anniversary. Oh, wow. Three so the next is the third wave of shit. Do you, know how, do you not know how to read, Neb? Is that something that you, you're not taught in your home country? Uh, it's, it's three waves of content. Parenthesis, we're on second wave now. First of all, yes, the content doesn't specify a time frame, and then now, what does that mean? It's under the 2.5 anniversary. Can you not read? No, no. it's it says critical thinking not allowed says, in your country. Sword fusion is on the way. Is that un- under the 2.5 anniversary? It is. Well, they announced it oh. for that, but it might not be in this it's in not part time. of the 2.5 anniversary. You don't, know, you don't know yet. Oh. You don't know yet. I'm saying no. Yet. We also got like a bunch of free universal spirits. Yeah, a bunch, a bunch of free shit, a bunch of absolutes, yeah. a bunch of free summons. Look, if you're wanting to start DX2, you better start quick because you're going to run out of time. You already missed like half a summons, too. You might be able to get, still get in on them. No, you I think they, ex- they expired that. already. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. Well, guess what? If you didn't start, go kill yourself. That's yes. That's my advice. The other cool DX2 thing is they showed how they upscaled uh, the models for that. Uh, what was it for the the event in January or something? The physical, uh, the event. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it basically just resulted in a super nice Masakado and uh, Asakado thing and Asura Lord, and they just look really cool. They use yeah. waifu times two and Photoshop, and they show how <laughs> they show how something called waifu times two is better at upscaling models than Adobe Photoshop. And yeah, I think- some weird Japanese like command line based uh, photo editing thing that this uh, guy it's... at Sega used to to up-res an image of Masakado and Astro Lord to be this giant like 5 foot by 10 foot mural image. And I think it's amazing. Waifu 2X is for uh, upscaling images and for uh, getting rid of no- rid of noise in your images. Yeah, yeah it's called Waifu 2. I thought this was a troll post and someone puts this in the news oh. because the software is called oh, Waifu 2X. Because it's two times the Waifu. It's, and, and actually, those those two images, well, there's three because there's also one of Baldi Masakata, and it, they all just look really good. It's like 
it's good. That hopefully, they just use that for Nocturne and they use that for SMT5, and then we have really good games. But I mean, this is just for the purpose of making a like a high res promotional image. This is what I want them to do, Neb. Whole game. <laughs> Whole game. Yes. Well, you better buy like a nine K monitor so you can get that. Just mount on your entire wall. Yeah, that's what the YouTube money's for. Um, that's all that matters to you. A whole five dollars. And this is other news, but who cares about? Yeah, this all this miscellaneous news. It doesn't matter. So the only of this, the only other things you should pay attention to in terms of things that we didn't mention is that Sega's doing Print Club again, and PS2 Mega Ten games became bestsellers on Amazon as soon as or right after the direct for a short period of time, and that's kind of cool. Now Neb's going to read questions, and we're going to answer the questions that Neb reads. Okay, well we skipped a lot of news, so we'll go straight <laughs> to the questions. Why are you going to do that like that? First question is from at fansite on Twitter, who asks, "What do you think about a lot of Persona fans transitioning to Megaten now that the Nocturne remaster has been announced?" Before anyone answers this, it's I. I'm reading this like it's a gender thing because it says Persona fans okay. is transitioning to Megaton, which is bizarre. I also don't think this is a real phenomenon. So, Spider, why don't you approach this as our first uh, topic taker? Um, yeah. Uh, it's about time, I guess. Yeah. For Persona fans to abandon their roots, join us in the adult world. How do Persona fans transition to Megaton? Isn't Megaton inclusive to Persona? I think that people separate them, especially Persona fans tend to separate them because whatever. Um, I don't know. Um, In terms of what I think, it's just like cool. Like that's literally as much as I like, I haven't put any thought into how it's going to affect fans. All I've thought about is how much I want to play what like X thing and like all the little bits of news that we've been getting. I haven't really thought about the fan base at all. Basically that. I don't see how I would care at all about Persona fans playing Mega 10 games. I mean, good for them. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think this is a real thing. It definitely is because people, the, there's a couple of those like Mega 10 YouTubers who started making those like, oh, if you're getting into Mega 10, this is what to do. And those videos are doing really well because now people are all of a sudden looking up SMT a lot more. I guess so maybe I'm it. underestimating the ignorance of Persona 5 people. Well, you also got to remember that some of them are just Joker mains who don't even, who've never played Persona. <laughs> yeah. So, and like some other like subsets of people. Doctor is too hard. I can't wait for that. Yeah, that'll be fun. All right. Uh, yeah, I guess we all think it's cool and good collectively. Mm-hmm. Uh, so JP2... Uh, Lecture Boogaloo at JP Second Player One on Twitter writes in asking, What's a good starting point in SMT? Uh, Larue, you probably have the worst opinion on this, so why don't you start us off so we can correct you? Strange Journey, because Strange Journey ha- exemplifies the, the SNES gameplay, but it's better and it has a really good story. It has, it has the high quality NPC interactions, which only ever happens in. SMT Strange Journey and four and Redux and it has a good story, good art, memorable music. So and also it's difficult. So after you kind of understand the mechanics there, it'll every other game will feel a lot more easy to manage because nothing will require as much thinking as Strange Journey in terms of gameplay for Mega Ten. There you go, Gleb. I would say probably three or four oh. for gameplay wise, but I think it's really weird, like uh, recommending those first, since those games are like working off of concepts built up in one and two. So it's like how can you how can you like really? I mean, you, can, you don't need to play one and two to get to get get those games. But it's uh-huh. weird to me to recommend someone something when they don't when they don't have the concepts down. To me, I don't know. I see a lot of comics and stuff like that, but you know, it's 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 also tricky because. Like it's gonna this this question will be answerable differently depending on the person. One person probably would benefit benefit from Nocturne being their starting point. 
but yeah, someone might, too. Like if someone's more used to playing old, old older. Uh, I don't RPGs, think it's quite easier to recommend them one and two. I don't think yeah. anyone would benefit from Nocturne being the starting point. I played Nocturne first, and I turned out okay. the best fan of all time. Was that twenty years ago, or was that in twenty twenty? Seventeen years ago. <laughs> okay, that's not twenty twenty. I would say if you're starting with SMT in 2020, I would recommend Apocalypse. It has the most ease of use. It has the most quality Start of with? upgrades. Yes. Starting point in SMT. That's what I would say. It's you're going to most... skip it? That's the fact it's a sequel? Yes, I, yeah. Yeah, I would. I would do that because we're talking about a starting point. I actually, this the way is I'm a... interpreting this question. Is little... This is right. Crazy. Is unfamiliar with everything. Neb, this is literally the dumbest thing you said on the podcast. I think you, <laughs> I'm not sure if this is a joke or not. Yeah, are you are you joking? I would because no, this really a starting point. Are you really I, serious? Yeah, I, don't <laughs> know. I think they're out of being a deep troll. I don't I like don't... the characters. I don't like a lot of the stuff in the game, but I think it would be the best starting point. Okay, we are factually being correct. Think, think I feel like think of Frey like, is a good like second game, maybe, but first like your, I don't aforementioned, know like your aforementioned Joker man. Okay, someone who's only played Smash Brothers their entire life, and they're just now starting with SMT. Well, You're gonna recommend Nocturne to that motherfucker? That that chimpanzee who knows how to press one button. But it's getting a merciless modes, a merciful mode, so they can just do that. <laughs> no, it doesn't right now. We're talking about right now. We're not talking about March 2021. We're talking about right now. What's a good starting point? Apocalypse. That's my opinion. Fuck all of you. Very, very much, very much the lowest lowest IQ IQ game. No, no, no. no. The lowest IQ thing you've said. I I want to frame the statement because you recommended the original Strange Journey as a starting point. Are you insane? I didn't say the original. I just said Strange Journey. Because you said the original. Because oh, you said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm putting on my powdered wig and I'm getting my gavel out. That's the gavel sounding. You said good NPC interactions. And you're saying you didn't specify which strange journey. So yeah, what because... you're saying then, hold on, suppressed, overruled. You're saying that strange journey redux had good NPC interactions. The interactions are the same. Really? So you're saying they were good. So you're saying you're not you're not upset by all the little little images and little characters that pop up, and those interactions were good. I'm talking about the character writing. It's not yeah, okay. No, that's the interactions though. When you interact with the character, you see their their little their little sprite, their little profile. So you <laughs> like that? You think that was good in Strange Journey? Hey, Neb is triggered just because you, just that. because you're just a dumb in. Day, you're just, I've had yeah, a power yeah, window. Yeah. Neb, you can you can wear the dumb hat for today, and then you can always return it. It's not something that's permanent. It's so you okay don't that you angry. like Redux. It's okay. You don't have to be angry, Neb. Calm down. I know that you're what you said was stupid. <laughs> you're having an East Coast moment right now, Leroux. <laughs> I, I, I'm just disappointed in you, dude. Like I, I just can't. Neb got exposed. Apocalypse is the best starting point. No, yes. Spider. What did you think? You didn't say anything. Yeah, Spider. You yeah. Were. Um. I think the best starting point is to ignore what everyone else says and start where your interests lie. It doesn't matter if the game plays too hard or if you, you know, just pick what is interesting to you. Just read the description, look at the gameplay, find out what catches your interest. Because there's no point in playing or trying anything if you're not interested in it. Wow. So if if you if you put if you relate our opinions to Megaton, uh Neb's was true demon ending. Spider the, the most hardcore and cool. So thank you. ending. <laughs> Mine is Masubi and uh, Yours is the gayest one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Neb's is Chiaki's one. No, don't. <laughs> no, <laughs> Neb's is demon end. Oh yeah, Neb's is demon. End. I want to be All true right. demon. You said true demon. Where are you going with that? No, I'm okay, gonna do that that you made me mad. <laughs> you overruled once again. Passione at El Passione writes in asking, "What's your favorite Atlas character design?" I don't know what this means exactly. Atlas could mean a lot of things. It could mean like 
isn't Golden any Tate gone in the Atlas game? <laughs> I would say uh, I would say any Atlas game, even licensed. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bottom out and say Holy Ghost and say fuck you. I think they they probably mean character like a uh, person. Yeah. Oh, like yeah, so a let's... human sign. Okay. Well, character isn't specific though. It's not saying a player character or a character you interact with. I mean, like a demon kind of character. It's not a demon, I think. Neb, why are you like this today? Come on. <laughs> it's I'm interpreting the ways it's written. Right now, it's Romero. To be honest. Which one? I'm trying to be fair. Romero. He's he's just too cool. I like him. Who? What's that? The monkey from Slackers. <laughs> oh, Romero. <laughs> Okay, yeah, he's good actually. Okay, choosing Romero over Snippy, Snappy. Um, you're racist if you don't choose him. Favorite character design? It's hard to say because all the character designs suck. Um, yes. Dang, there's. I don't think there's any. <laughs> like it sounds bad, but I, I actually can't think of a character design that was. I was like, this is perfect. Or this is really, really, really good. I always just was like, I like that. It's kid. not perfect. It's your favorite. That's the question. No, but that's what I'm saying. Is like, there's not a character design that like really was like, man, I really love this design. You, you don't like anything that's perfect. <sighs> um, I oh I I guess the little um, the David Bowie Lucifer. I like I, I like that one. Oh, the nude boy. What? The nude boy. See the one with the the sash, like tastefully across his crotch. No, no, no. The David Bowie one, where he's in the suit, the one where he's in the suit and he's touching his chest. Lewis Cipher. Oh, okay, that one. Yeah, I like, like that the one, one the design where he has the wings and stuff. I like that one. That's really cool. Or maybe Don, uh, not Don. Um, oh, the guy with the the, the guy from SMT two with the tall hair. I can't remember his name. Is it Gimmel or? No, Gimbal's. I don't remember. SMT2 guy. <laughs> I'm going to ignore your premise and just say Holy Ghost again. Okay. It's actually incorrect. Spider? Um, well, I don't know. Uh, I've had Demi Fiend for the past five years as my avatar, so let's go with that. That's wow. Cool. She really loves the shoes. <laughs> twink, twink mode. Okay. Um, let's see. Tuner at Junkyard Tuner writes in asking, when it comes to localizations of games, what improvements changes would you like to see in SMT5 besides the simultaneous warfare release? What? Well, what I think improvements localization in SMT5? Don't change anything. Um, yeah. Just keep the localization as accurate as possible, like no axiom, please. Yeah, we, we, yeah don't we're not Korean. You don't need to remove the uniforms or whatever. <laughs> uh, does anyone else have any thoughts on this? That's a confusing question to me. I'd like less localization. I don't like the fact that they changed um, Lewis Cipher's name in Strange Journey to Louis Cipher. I also don't like the Axiom translation in uh, Apocalypse. And Nocturne even itself has some censorship with like Menorah and Candelabra. There's always these really subtle changes that really oh. change the interpretation of things. It's supposed to be Menorah? Yeah, it's actually Menorah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, we're not going to get into that right now. We're going to move on to the second part of the question. Do you generally prefer the standard chaos order neutral alignments of Devil Summoner 1 in SMT4 or something different like SMT3 or Desu 2? I don't know anything about Devil Summoner one or two. I assume they're talking about or Survivor. I think it was Survivor, talking. probably. Survivor. I don't know about those. They suck. I know about four and three though, so I know what he's getting from there. Um, uh, so more sucks. options are less. I mean, more options is cooler, I guess, if they're distinct, right? It entirely depends on how the ending's it's done. Yeah, how the ending is done for sure. This question isn't fully inclusive because there's a fourth ending in four too. The problem, the problem is the white. I w like the chaos law neutral is good in something like Strange Journey, but I think it's horrible in something like SMT four. 
because I think that they represent it in a childish way. Same thing with um, SMT2, they represent it very childishly. Um, yeah, it depends on the implementation. So yeah, so like, yeah, what Spider said, what you just said right now, it has to be done well. I, I, would, I wouldn't care either way as long as it's done well. Glib? Glibothy? Uh, Desu 1 sucks. I'm sure Desu 2 also sucks. This is Desu. Desu 1 sucks uh, Alliance. I, I love that you, that you, that wasn't even part of the question. You just had to like, just, <laughs> just shut off this guy, like out of nowhere. How <laughs> would it be known? Um, <laughs> other than that, I don't really care as long as it's good. I mean, as long as it's interesting and fun. I don't hey, really care. that's four people unanimous. Since that's four separate walks of life all saying that it just has we to be all, good. Oh, do we all have different alignments? Are we the alignment? Wait, we're talking about it? I don't think that the reasons are that different from the alignments, to be honest. They're not. They're um, not. People just they say they're it because they want There's to. Like a little more flavor they, to it. That they is... change the visuals for it, and that and that makes yeah. people think it's different. Like, I don't know. It's weird to me. The the other thing to consider is if we are the four alignments, what is that? What are the alignments then? I'm I mean, the white. <laughs> yeah, you, more ways than one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. We are doomed to endlessly repeat our mistakes. <laughs> And then, dang, okay, so then what would that mean? Liz is definitely law. Liz is law, for sure, yeah. Spider's neutral, and we could just... I am not chaos. Yeah, you're chaos. chaos. There's there's nothing chaotic about me. World of Strength. (laughs) We bought four copies of that fucking pre-order thing of the Nocturne Special Edition to deprive other people, and now you're trying to resell it to them? To the people? (laughs) <laughs> you're like you're like he's uh-huh. even got the evil laugh down you're, you're, you're sitting on your throne of magazines of hijuri occult magazines and you're like no one else can have this i fought for this this is my strength you're making me like a smog Come, like... try to destroy me and take this from me no no, no. you're making it like a smog thing but it's more like i have the library of alexandria and i just don't want it to burn so I just keep it. One book alone. That is no. That is one. <laughs> that is a malapropism by you. So. <laughs> That's right. I'm bringing out the three syllable words, motherfucker. Yeah, Mal- I mean, that is the white end of the syllables. Yeah. Actually, yeah, it was not three syllables. <laughs> <laughs> I never said into an account. All right, we're gonna move on. Uh, awesome stuff. Gonna... At I only tweet stuff. Writes favorite S and T game available on the 3ds. Uh, blitz around, go glib. Favorite game on 3ds? That's SMT. Uh, if we're counting DS games, up, no, 3DS. 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 on just 3DS, then Soul Hackers easily. Okay, Glaru, Soul Hackers. Okay, Spider, four for me. <laughs> it's a three way tie between four Apocalypse and Soul Hackers, they're all really great and fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna move on. Yeshi at T. I don't know how to pronounce this. T A Y Yeshi. I don't know. How do you think Alice could bring back the original Digital Devil Story saga into relevancy? They can't. The original. De- is this like the old like Loki with the computer? Like that shit. Is that what they're talking about? Yes, that's what they're talking about. Okay, they can't. No. The answer is no. It's anyone it's- else. I mean, no, that's that's the answer. Yeah, that's like... So I've made this joke before, but it's like, instead of doing a school shooting, you summon a bunch of demons and get them to kill all the kids for you. And that's like what that original story was. There's not really a good way to make that relevant again, I don't think. Without setting people off. Yeah. It's, it's a already, pretty fucked um... up. It's got like rape stuff in it. Not good. <laughs> it's already getting a re-release in Japan, which we're never going to get because they're never going to localize older games like that again. Right? Because yeah. nobody buys it. Yep. Yeah. Next uh, sure. Next question. So th- I'm going to just sort of rattle off a bunch of remaster and remake questions all at once, and I credit the the people who asked them because you know they're they're loyal fans. They're cool people. For instance, Michael Sanchez, longtime writer in. Uh, at length username asks first of all, Kyaku Megami Tensei one two spoiler cast when interesting question. Follows up, what's the next 
a PS2 era game you hope Atlas remasters a la Nocturne HD? Don't answer this because we're moving on. Sonic Saber YT at Skyrider G7. Do you think there will be a P123 remake or SNT12 remake? Uh, don't answer that either. Catherine Stacy at MLG764. Do you think there's a chance that DDS, <laughs> Duology, or Raidu will get a remaster? Uh, is there anything else for remasters? Is that it? The, I think those are the three. Yeah, there might have been one or two more that were repeats of this, basically, but we'll credit those people because they have the most interesting way of phrasing it. So the question is do you think DDS, Raidu, uh, anything, Persona 1 through 3 or SMT 1 and 2 will get remade. What do you think? Persona no. 1, through th- 1 through 2, no. Um, Hopefully. SMT 1 and 2, no. Um, 3, yes. Or at least ported. Um, Persona 3, yes. Yeah, sure. Persona 3 ported for sure. I, I hope Digital Devil Saga is the next thing to port. Our remaster then Raido. Digital Devil Saga is a more interesting story. Better looking. Everything else better about it. So I'd rather play that first anyway. Started anyway. Raidu 1. I don't see how they remaster that, bro. The that gameplay is dog shit so far. If they don't introduce a new element for the gameplay, oh. that's going to oh. be a tough one. This is, so one thing I'll say about Mega 10 games is that people complain about encounter rates a lot. But for me, that's never been much of a problem, except in Raidu 1. I actually hate the encounter rate. Because the well, game, I think it's I think it's in actually linked with what you do during the encounter. Because in Soul Hackers, the encounter rate is very high, but I personally found the combat to be entertaining to some degree. Yes, and it's mostly because Nemesis can just delete everything, and that's funny to me. So you it's run into a demon every thirty seconds. You're like, all right, get ready to get fucked, motherfucker. Thirty seconds is wipe you it. out. Yeah, it probably it's shorter than that. Yeah. No, yeah, but, but then in Raido, it's like, all right, I gotta walk behind this guy and then combo him and then walk him around him again and then stab him. It's like, okay, I killed him. Walk ten feet to inspect some clue. It's like, oh, I gotta do this again. Cool. But it's, it's not, not even really just like you're it. It. not a lot of buttons to press. Mm-hmm. Not like resistances to think about or math to do. Like, oh, I can't hit this guy. I have to hit this guy instead with Almighty because he's got resist. It's walk behind this guy and press buttons. It, it's, it's like, not even fuck this. It's just it's not even the fact that there's nothing to do. It's uh, it's they're so long. There's no way for it to be fast with so hackers yeah. and the other game. Yeah, you, you just delete battle. them. You're like, yeah. fuck you. I'm out. So, so yeah, you could have 30 um encounters in under 10 minutes, but they're like 31 second encounters. For Raidu, it's man, now you got me saying it like that. Raido, it's um Raidu. It's like, every battle is like a minute long, and that doesn't sound like a lot of time, but it's a lot of time. It's so annoying. It's not yeah. fun. And there's way more stuff to do with with turn based battle. You can like if you get in turn based battle, you can go make lunch and come back, and nothing's good. If you get into a Raidu battle, you got to press buttons and move around. It's fucked up. Fuck this live action shit. What do you think you're doing with this? If it's gonna be live action, make it as hot and as cool as Makin. Yeah, doesn't live up to that, bro. Doesn't oh, live. Shit. So Glib Neb or Glib Spider, what are you guys thoughts on the remaster stuff? I think every single Mega Ten will be remade. <laughs> is what these questions uh, about to? On the first, uh, <laughs> I was a persona. Uh, the PS2 era remasters. Um, honestly, I do not care at all. I don't even care about Nocturne HD to be honest with you. I don't care at all. Um, but I do think that if anything, they should do Rido because those are really hard to get on PS2 now. They're expensive. Well, there's a way. Yeah. Yes, I reckon right. there'd be a way to get those games. I think many people complain about Are their availability to get that that? on Steam. I'm just talking in a way that indicates a certain thing you could do. Matey. Whisper? <laughs> Whisper? Is that what you are? <laughs> do it not be clear to you, mate. A time in buying here. <laughs> Are you, Atlas, I please like don't it. shut him down. This is you're making me very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Spider? Do you have any opinions on remakes? Do you think every single game should be remade and really re-released for the modern age? I don't think it's worth the effort. I don't think people are going to buy it. 
if they remake it. Um, it's better just to remaster it and put it on a um, system that people actually buy. Yep. Agreed. Next question. Here's a quick one. Griffith the Eighth at Griffith Eighth uh, on Twitter writes in asking, "Any chance SMT is on PS4?" Friends, nope. Hope is last thing lost. No, hope is lost. If you are not a Nintendo baby and you do not own a Switch, you will not be able to play SMT5 for probably 10 years until they put it on PC later on. Yeah, this is definitely a Switch exclusive and it's going to stay that way. Don't expect yeah. it to be ported. No, sir. Uh, you get nothing. Yeah, so, uh, oh yeah, bash the fash, communism emoji at Heat Street 9. (laughs) Do you think Atlas will upgrade the fusion system in Nocturne? I hate exiting and re-entering. Nope, Uh, they won't. (laughs) Yeah, I think they'll they'll probably patch that out. That's fucking dumb. I remember that. For anyone unaware, when you went to the, the, uh, what is it called? Heretic Mansion or... Is it called the cathedral right. on the localization? I don't You're, know. You're right. Whatever You're it's right. called. The place where you do fusion, when you fuse two demons, the amount of inheritance, inherited skills are like random. You got to go back and reconfirm it to like get a different generation of what skills get passed on. And it's stupid. It's like, why would you do that? If it's random, you're just going to abuse it. And it's not even like you have to use a save state to do it because you can see, you can preview what they are. You have to wait for the fusion to happen. It's totally stupid. And if they don't remove that, it'll be insane. I think the point of it is so that you don't get exactly what you want. But you can. You just got to keep going back out and in. I mean, most people don't. Most people just do it for like a few minutes and then be like, oh, this is good enough, I guess, and then move on. Yeah, I think it's purposely designed that way, and I don't think they're... I hope they change it because it's stupid. Going to. <laughs> I, I think, think it's still... unlikely they'll change it, but I hope they change it as well. Because it just slows everything down. Exactly. It's a lot, of, especially early on, it's not that big of a deal. Who gives a shit? But later on, it's like, come on, man. Like, I'm I just going to try to get this transferred. It's not. I, I'm absolutely going to sit there and do that. I'm just going to transfer over and over until I get what I want. So just wow. let me choose or something. I don't think it's optimal, but I don't know what I don't, if they fixed it. I don't know what how they would fix it and if that would be better. Because I don't, I don't think there's a much better option that they're really going to do realistically, other than just making you pick what skills you want. I think that's kind of dumb to me. As long as they don't allow you to like transfer fog breath onto elementals or change, you know how inheritance works. I think it's fine. It's just yeah. simply a um, UI change. Yeah, because it's like just being able to choose from a discrete set of values from two set of demons isn't going to break the game because people would sit by and brute force it anyway. It's not like... It's it's not not changing the availability of the skill. It's just how you actually put it on and how much time it takes to actually be in a kitchen or a So instead of 20 minutes, you know, sitting there resetting, resetting, resetting for things you already know that can go on there, you just put it on in there and leave instead of being sitting there for 20 minutes. You're not going to be able to make insane stuff that you can for where it's like the Wild West, you know? Yeah, I don't want them to put um, make the skills more available at all. Four was way too easy to do that. But if you just upgrade that in Nocturne, it's not a big deal, I don't think. Anyway, uh, we're right. The other people are wrong. We're going to move on. What's the last question? Oh, here's a good one to end on. Well, I guess we have two to end on. Um... We've already done that one. We're going to do that one. Let's end on this one. GFB Tunes at GFB Tunes on Twitter asks, what's your favorite part about making these podcasts? Let's Liveru, start since you're, this is your idea doing this, this nightmare, oh, yeah. why don't you tell us? Um, I, there's a couple of things. I love being in charge. So, so bullying and being in charge of Neb makes me happy. Charge, so, okay. But go on. <laughs> No, my favorite part is the um, the part that leads up to the podcast, which is uh, Spider and Glib posting all the news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, the leg work. <laughs> Look, I'm the color commentator, okay? I bring the personality. That's my job. You guys I, 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 I always try to 
I make an effort to put at least three posts per per like news cycle. I like, don't think I've contributed a single piece of news <laughs> in my entire life. I don't think I have either. <laughs> I have made these posts today, all of them. <laughs> like if you look at the if you look at our news channel, that's it's mostly just you, uh, just uh, Glib and Spider, and then I'll put- Glib posted E Girl Monica, which <laughs> really cursed. Yeah, I dated someone like this in high school who wasn't eight years old. <laughs> wore my chemical romance shirt and a choker, and dyed her hair. So this is very triggering for me. Yeah, but that's my favorite part. Is literally the part where Spider and Glib do all the work, and I just read everything. <laughs> yeah, my favorite part is just just uh, having a nice cigar, drinking a lot, and uh, usually being on drugs and just talking a lot. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a good time. It's fun. Um, sort of like improv, you know, but you don't uh, molest anyone like most people in improv do. <laughs> Glib? Glib. Oh, I think you spider. Oh, okay. Uh, I think it's kind of fun, I guess. I was initially going to say that it's cool having intellectual discussion about SMT, but after this call, oh, I don't know. I, don't do that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> don't try to pick the moral high ground, you law hero. You... I don't know, bro. This podcast, I'm looking kind of stupid right now. I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's pretty low. Oh, I never yeah, yeah. said to think about starting with Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best starting point. I'm going Definitely to... Definitely not at all. Any level. Start with the second game, not the first game. That makes sense. Yes, please. You're going to tell people that. to try to find St. Michael's Cathedral on the S&T4 Overworld when they've never been to Japan, or whatever that gay-ass cathedral is? They're not going to have thing is, even Spider's dunking on you, Neb, so that's how you know you're... No. Right. no. <laughs> He's joining the bandwagon. I'm the I'm the chaos hero. This is like... Street, uh, this is like um, I was the- ranting about this the other day, actually. <laughs> So Neb's wrong, confirmed. Spider, what's your favorite part about the podcast? Reading all the news. I like, <laughs> I like finding all of it. I like reading all of it. I just, yeah, I have like 30 different feeds of just like stuff in Japanese and English and it collects stuff from Google and Twitter and all that. And yeah, I just look through all that sometimes. <laughs> I have to say, it's always really weird to me when I talk about something that Spider's even like, and she already knows news before I do. <laughs> <laughs> Spider is literally the gif of uh, Futaba typing and <laughs> No For the record LaRue just compared Spider to Futaba from Persona 5 which is horrendously insulting We're going to end the podcast with that sexism I guess, I think I'm not sure Is it accused of being an e-girl sexist? Is that what that is? We don't know, is it classist? I'm not sure. Why don't you debate amongst yourselves and let us know? Oh, also, before we leave, uh, we had a a, uh, a contest. We've been trying to get people to win. Uh, we had selected our winners in a previous episode. Only two of them accepted. Allura, do you have the winners handy at all? Do I have the... Yeah, because I do all the work. Yeah, I have I have the the winners handy. Why? What do you want? Well, why don't you say the names of the people who haven't contacted us yet, and then we will, I don't know, call them out here so we can talk to them? <laughs> okay, I mean, so essentially what it boils down to is I responded to your comments on the on the video that had the contest on it, and I just need you guys to actually literally contact me in any of the ways that we mentioned before. Of course, I auto-played it. Um, so the people... The two people that have already responded, you know who you are. But we need Super Skyman sixty four. If you can please respond, and Sarikaya, if you can please respond. Uh, I think that was it. it shouldn't be hard, this hard to give away a free game. Yeah, we're trying to give you free stuff, guys. So come on, please get those people to talk to us. And if we really can't get in touch with them, we'll figure out some other. Some other situation because we got five keys burned holes in our pockets here. Okay, wait, We're five so- keys but only four people. Who was the fifth well, person? Ramon and Carl? <laughs> no. So we originally had four because there's four hosts, and then I saw that stupid ass boofu moment comment, and I was like, we got to do five. We got to do five. 
Yeah, that means I forgot to contact someone. I don't know which uh, one. Well, we're going to figure it out, folks. If Luru replied to you in the comments of YouTube, please, please respond. Yep, yeah, please. Please do it. That's... I, yeah, uh, that's game. the episode, folks. Uh, anything else from anyone? Uh, Perfect. Really. We're going to get out of here. It's over. The music is already playing. Whatever the music is going to be this week, probably the same thing as the newscast. Uh, 